A few weeks ago, our clergy team got an email that made us all smile. There's a woman in our community who wanted to say Kaddish for her mother. She always took the obligation of saying Kaddish for her mother very seriously. But she wondered how could she do it in a pandemic. And the answer was captured in a photograph that her husband lovingly took of her. And this is what the photograph shows. It shows this woman in her living room on her screen davening with our clergy team in the Gan Chapel. She is honoring her mother. She is saying Kaddish. She is davening with us. And this husband sent it to us, and we all smiled. It moved us deeply. And here's why. Since this pandemic began, and the lockdown began seven months ago, every single day, every morning, and every evening of every day, our clergy team leads services in a closed building in the empty Gan Chapel, or in the empty Rabbi Samuel, Chink, Rabbi Samuel Chill Sanctuary, like right now. Here it is, Yom Kippur. Here it is, Kol Nidre. And it's the clergy team, and David Beckman, and Jeff Lurie, and empty pews. And there you are on the other side of the camera. And we sometimes wonder, and we sometimes worry, are you here? Is anybody out there on the other side of the camera praying with us? Now, we know intellectually that the answer to that question is yes. We get appreciative emails from you, and we're so grateful that you follow and that you let us know that you do. And we have metrics that track how many devices tune in to every service and to every class. And these metrics actually yield a paradox. Namely, more people are praying with us and more people are learning with us online than used to do so in person. So intellectually we know you are here, but still we worry. We worry that we're all getting too used to, too used to not coming to shore. And that even when this pandemic is over, that it will have affected shul attendance patterns in ways that none of us can anticipate or predict. And we worry that empty pews will continue to be. We worry about loneliness. Loneliness was a problem. Loneliness was an epidemic before the pandemic. But the pandemic only made the epidemic of loneliness that much worse. We worry that the vibrancy of our religious school and the vibrancy of our preschool, fabulous teachers, happy learners, is going to get undermined by fears of COVID. And we worry. We worry about all the members of our beloved community, all our members, our singles, and our young couples, and our families, and our empty nesters, and our beloved seniors, who finally found a spiritual community here. They found their home here. They found their connection here. And what will be for them? What will be for us if we cannot pull through this together? The need for this place, the need for this place where we see care and love one another has never been greater 
But how do we keep on keeping on? How do we keep on hanging together when we cannot be in the same place, when everyone in our community, literally everyone in our community is in their own homes, even on Yom Kippur, in their own sofas, behind their own screens? How do you keep together with that? Now, the Torah speaks to this because the Israelites had their own version of our problem. Like us, they faced uncertainty. Like us, they faced insecurity. Like us, they did not have a home. They did not have 385 Ward Street where they could go and gather. Like us, they wandered in the wilderness. We wander in the COVID wilderness for seven months and counting. And they wandered in the wilderness wilderness for 40 years. So how then did they stay together? And the Torah tells us how. They stayed together because together they did a collective, shared, joint building project that was beautiful and big and important. What they did was they built the Mishkan, the tabernacle, so that God could dwell among the community. And when you read the narrative in the book of Exodus, the light motif, the recurring word, it happens over and over and over and over again, is the word call. Call means every. And the text says over and over again, call ish, but call isha. Every man gave, every woman participated. Call ish, but call isha, everybody. Every man and woman gave something. The woodworkers gave wood. The metal workers gave metal. The gem workers gave gems. The weavers weaved. The spinners spun, the schleppers schlepped. Every person gave their gift, and their gift was their promise. I am here with you, and we are in this thing together. Now, can we do that? So some signs are encouraging. Some signs are promising. There are people who had never given before to our annual appeal, and they've given for the first time this year in the pandemic. And there are other people who renewed their generosity. They gave us what they gave in previous years. And there are still others who increased their gift more generous than ever in this pandemic. And I want to say, we want to say to all of you who gave, whatever you gave, whether this is your first gift or a renewed gift or an increased gift, we want to say thank you, not only for your generosity and for the resources, we want to thank you for the love. We want to thank you for the friendship. We want to thank you for the support. We want to thank you for the gesture in the pandemic that I am here with you. Yeah, the building is empty. Yeah, our worship spaces are closed. Yeah, we get it. But we are in this thing together. And a lot of you are getting that. And that is hopeful. But there are also some signs that point in the other direction. There are also some signs that are not quite as hopeful. There are fewer people who have given to the annual appeal this year, our number of donors is down. If you compare how many donors gave to the annual appeal last year before Kol Nidre, to the number of donors who gave this year before Kol Nidre, we have fewer donors this year. Now, if you have chosen as of yet not to give, my message to you is very simple. That you give is much more important than what you give. That you give, that you give something, 
that you give anything, that you say, call ish for call isha, I'm in with you, is more important than the amount that you give. Now, to be sure, we need the resources. We need resources. Because the cost of running our synagogue in this prolonged pandemic have never been more uncertain. And they have never been more unpredictable. Thank God our religious school and our preschools are open. And that means post-Pittsburgh that we have significant security costs. And we have sec significant technology costs for the live streaming and for the website that enables us to connect to you. And we have significant cleaning and PPE costs so that our building is safe and healthy. And while all of those costs have gone up, our revenue has gone down because some of our families have really been hurt by this pandemic. So we need revenue, but even more than revenue, even more than revenue, we need you. We need you more than revenue. We need each of you, call Ish, for call Isha, to say, I am here with you. We are in this thing together. Now, just Thursday of this week, a few days ago, ah, Hashem, thank you for this. So beautiful. This woman who lives in Portland, Oregon, sent us a very lovely gift out of the blue. Nobody solicited her. She wasn't on anybody's list. To be honest, she lives in Portland, Oregon, so we did not even know of her existence. But she has two grandchildren in our preschool, and they love, love, love our preschool. And those children's parents, that is, this woman from Oregon's children, they love, love, love our preschool. So she sends the following note along with her gift, and I quote, My husband and I are very thankful for the safe and wonderful teaching and spirituality of the preschool teachers of our grandchildren. My parents who lived through the Holocaust would have been thrilled to see them at Temple Emanuel. This woman is with us from Portland, Oregon. May we be with one another now. May we walk together now through this very dark season until we get to the other side and then on to happier times together. Again, if you have already given, thank you so much. And if you have not given yet, again, that you give so much more important than what you give. And after Yom Kippur is over tomorrow night, you can go on our website, go on our homepage, and you can give your gift very easily. We want to thank all of you, all of you. Call Ish, the call Isha, for being with us and for being for us in our own very big and very important and very joint and very collective building project. We're trying to build a resilient and compassionate community that can survive and thrive and inspire in all seasons. Gamartov.